on the dice and off the dice. A pleasant and happy morning one and all present here. It's my privilege to welcome you all for this beautiful gathering. We all gather here to gain some knowledge about digital literacy. So it is the need of the art. We have to know about it. The title, this title has to initiate, insisted to all the girls today. So because you all and buddies used to post your snaps and videos to load up websites like Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp and TikTok, Dubmash like that. So once you post your uh, snaps and videos, it will be open to all. So we should aware about in that, in that type of postings. So through this session, we are all going to have that type of awareness. That level of program was insisted by our Honorable Principal Sir, who encourages us, build confidence among us, instills a lot of learning to us and changes our college environment forever to us. So we make sure feel so happy to welcome our young and energetic Principal Sir to this gathering. Welcome you Sir. Mr. Parneyu Singh, Director, Cyber Peace Foundation, Delhi. And Mr. G. Muthuwe, Aptek Computer Education, Kavitori. And Mr. Sundaramuthi, ACPS, Parambalu. Such kind of eminent personalities we have our chief guest today. Mr. Parneyu Singh, a highly accomplished and renowned has an extensive work experience of 16 years with corporate houses like IBM, Wipro, Cipla, etc. He has worked with clients across US and UK where and he was responsible for managing teams. He has conducted more than 600 workshops. Sir, women self feel so proud to conduct this seminar and to have you all as our chief guest. Welcome you all, sir. Time of printing circular, we type Women's Cell has planned to organize their seminar in collaboration with Facebook, National Commission for Women, like that. Such kind of proud movement you people and our principal sir only gave to us. On behalf of our principal Women's Cell, I cordially invite every one of our honorable chief guests to our esteemed institution. Then I invite all of Women's Cell members and my assistant coordinator. Teamwork always brings beyond and evidence for that. Without their support and encouragement, I could not be able to put a single step forward. I feel so happy to welcome you all, Max. Last but not least, I am so happy to welcome all the young and beautiful girl children of our Anjak family. Welcome you, girls. Thank you, ma'am, for your party welcome. Now, may I call upon the most supportive and the navigator of this knowledge, our principal, Dr. C. Asut Sir, to deliver presidential address. Good morning, everybody. At the outset, I am really happy to have you in this occasion. I have been trying to collect you all in one umbrella, but human self was unable to gather you since we have a lacuna of auditorium. So, in this sense, on behalf of you, I must be thankful to. Dr. Uh, Mr. J. Paul Nixon, Chairperson, Asian Center for Professional Skills, Nagarbari, and Mr. G. Mutuve, Center Head of Active Computer Education Rajapalaya. They are the instrument for this program. When they approached me, I immediately accepted to give program for you. Then they have arranged Director of Cyber Peace Foundation, Mr. 
Pundita Singh is at our place. He is positively accepted our invitation and he has come over all the way from Jordan. And I am equally thankful to Mr. G. Mukhiwet, Senator Head, and Mr. Sundra Murthy, ACPS Paramaru. He is also Mr. Riyad. The program is a digital shakti. There is no program digital shiva. Shiva is a program that is not available. Anyhow, women, as already I pointed out in the women's cell, women are the most important part of the human being. Sure. So, for this you have to develop your courageous as well as confidence. How can you build the courageous and confidence? You must be very thorough in the technology. Unless otherwise you develop your knowledge in the courageous as well as confidence. So, I insisted Dr. Nadeva for managing this kind of program in our midst. She has really accepted it. She made very good arrangement. Here, whenever you share the data to someone else, you must be well aware. or all other private concern or an individual. That has to be well known to you. So, there are so many identity thefts. You are creating some identity and this database will be act by someone be sold by them in the market. You may receive several messages or several unwanted things over phone or SMS. So be aware. At the same time, there are several technologies even in our camera. Such cameras are used everywhere and you must be able to find out whether it is having surveillance, CCTV surveillance or not. That must be found by you. Unless otherwise you find something, you may not be able to cope up with the situation. So, you will learn something from this program and develop your boldness so that you may face the world with no hardship. In the Pali Manavial, Aluri Manavial, Anivaru, technology. ये पूरी विशेष प्रकार में इंद्रा दा तेरी है ना आधा ये पूरी वो तो मन में इंद्रा दे वो ना क्यों पूरी है ना इधर इतना इतना हमारे लाइफ का नरिया प्रचलित हो रहा है अगर प्रचलित हो रहा है तो उसके लिए तो उसके लिए मेरा बच्चा तो ला इधर प्रोग्राम में हम उधर उन्हें ना नंबर है कंट्री होना Now, may I request our resource person, Mr. Purunendu Singh, Director of Cyber, Cyber Peace Foundation, to enlighten the gathering.
I guess there was no breakfast in the morning today. Did you girls have breakfast? Yes. Oh no. You did. See, I had lots of idlis in the morning. And I am so energetic. Show some energy, girls. Come on. Make some noise. Okay? Talk. This is not a classroom session. You are not going to give some exams after this. Okay? All you need to do is listen, respond, learn and practice. Okay? Great. So, how many cell phone users are here? Show me some hands. How many people have got smartphones? Not now. I know college projects, but at home. How many people are there who has got smartphone? Look at the poster 
which is there on the screen. There are two parts to this poster. One is then, another one is called now. So this let's look at the then part. This then. Okay? We have the then part. What do you see? You see people are getting stuck to electrical wires. They are dying. Correct? This poster was made somewhere around 1901 to 1905 at that time. This is the time where electricity was introduced to the world. Okay? When electricity was discovered. There was a section of society which said we will not use electricity. Okay? When people asked that why will you not use electricity, this is a good thing, they started making posters like this. Where they started showing the world that electricity is dangerous. If anything happens, you will get a shock, you will die. Right? Right? <laughs> electricity is still dangerous. If you touch an open wire, which has got electric current in it, you will still get a shock. But can you imagine your life today without electricity? Can we live without electricity today? Can we live? Can we live? Loud. Yes, we cannot live it. What we do now? We use the right tools, right measures to use it safely. Right? Anyone of you goes to the socket, the holes which are there on the electrical board, puts your finger inside and says, oh, wow, current is there. Do you do that? No. We use something called tester, a small screwdriver-like device which we put inside and we touch the end of it, it gives a light. And then we say, yes, yes, there is power in it. If light is not there, we say, no, there is no power. Right? So we are using right tools and right safety measures to save ourselves and to use the electricity rightly. Same condition is there for internet and technology. Right? Are you different? Are you different? Yes? Yes? Okay. Oh. It doesn't look like people are not saying yes. And do you have a doubt you are different? Yes? No? Maybe. Tell me one thing. What happens when a teacher enters your class, what is the first thing that you do? You wish the teacher good morning or good afternoon based on the time in your clock. Correct? Anybody says, hello ma'am, what's up? Do we say that? Or nice dress. Do we say that? We don't. Why? Because in our society, we are always told to respect teachers in a certain manner. Correct? But at the same time, when you meet your friend, you do all those things. Hey, what's up? Nice looking dress. Or if they are very fully prepared, they say, wow, you know, we do that, right? So, the society has told us to behave in a certain manner with different set of people. If it is a friend, we behave differently. If it is our teacher, we behave differently. If it is our parents, we behave differently. And younger brothers and sisters, we behave like criminals. We them on anything and everything. Right? That is called responsible social behavior. Similarly, there is something called responsible online behavior. When you are online, you behave in a certain manner. That we need to learn today. Once you learn these 
what is technology, what is social responsible behavior and what safety measures you should take. You are called physically literate. Okay? This is what exactly I was talking about because I know people at the back may not be able to read the presentation properly. So I am taking you point by point of each slide. Don't worry if you are not able to look at it. Okay? I will place a video also. Question. What percentage of Indian population is using internet? Yes, what percent? And this girl, who will not look at me, she is promised person. What percent? 90. What percent is that? 90. Okay. All of you have a number in mind? What percentage of Indian population is using internet? Let's see. Oh, very less. Thirty-four percent. And with this thirty-four percent, where do you think we rank in the world? What is our position in the world? Do you know? Can you make a guess? Sorry? Number one? Okay. Somebody says number one. What else? No problem. Keep a number in your mind. We just lost one position man. We are number two in the world in using internet. With just 34% of population. So just imagine, if we go 50%, what will happen? We will become number one. Reason is population. Our population is very huge. Okay, now, lot of people have asked me this question and some of you also hesitate. May I have this question as, why are you doing this program only for women? Are men not supposed to use internet and technology? Answer is yes. Men are also supposed to. But women, why? Because there is an inclusion problem. Inclusion as in, women are using internet very less. And you must have seen at your home also. If you have your grandparents, I don't know what you call them in your local language. What do we call them? grandfather and grandmother here? Sorry? Tata party. Okay. So why does the grandfather need? Does he need to go to Facebook? Yes. If the grandfather can be on Facebook, then grand Zomato. Do you know Zomato? Have you seen ads, advertisements, Zomato, Swiggy, where the diabetic uncle orders for a small gulab jamun? Right? So, all can happen without going anywhere. When I was a kid, buying clothes was a ceremony. For our information, I am pretty old. I passed by 10 class 24 years back. Ah, Buddha. Okay? 24 years back. So, when I was a small boy, like in 1980, I was dressed, I was super happy. Why? Because I will get ready, get on a scooter, go to the shop and the shopkeeper will throw like 10, 20 dresses. Then I will buy. Now, buying clothes has become boring for me. Because what happens is, the moment I say I need a t-shirt, my wife opens Amazon.com, orders one. Correct? So it has become boring. But see the potential of internet, I don't have to go anywhere and I can buy things sitting at my home. Right? You can get jobs, you can get rented accommodation, rented houses, all of that. OLX, you have heard OLX? Where people sell used stuff, you are using your fridge for like 6 years, now you want to change, put that fridge or oil and somebody will buy it. Correct? That's the potential of internet. Now, let's look at data. What is data? 
You have a smartphone? You have a smartphone back at home? Okay, good. Now, what's your name? Aishwarya. Aishwarya, you have a Facebook profile? Aishwarya has got a Facebook profile. Now Aishwarya, you have to come here. Okay girls, please pay attention. I am going to take you through two situations. Two situations, please pay attention. Now Aishwarya is a student of this college. Okay? Aishwarya, let's assume, suppose, Aishwarya stays 2 kilometers away from the college and daily you come walking on scooter cycle? Bike. Okay. So, Aishwarya comes normally on a bike but we will assume that Aishwarya wants to walk. Okay. She walks down from her house to the college. Right. Now, Aishwarya is coming from home to the college and I have a guy who is of your age. Not that Buddha, okay? Now I come to you and I say, Hello, will you come for a cup of coffee with me? <laughs> yeah? I am lucky. First time a girl said yes in one go. But normally you will not write a You don't know me. I am a stranger. You actually waiting for some guy to come and propose you? Okay. Now, say normally a girl will say no, right? Some stranger walking up to you, saying hello, will you come for a coffee? Either you will say no, go away. Or if you are not in a good mood, one night snap. Attack. Have a hot coffee. Right? Now, same thing. Thank you, Ashwarya. Now you can say. Okay. Now I need one more girl who's got a Facebook profile. Have a Facebook profile? Nice. Okay. Who has got? It? You have got a Facebook profile? Nobody has got. Now nobody will have a Facebook profile. I know that. Liar girls. Who has got? I'm telling you, I'll pick anyone. Anyone has a Facebook profile here? Come on, this is for your benefit. You have got a Facebook profile? I know nobody will. Whenever I ask, no one. You have one? See? I'll pick anyone. I'll turn a Jyotishi. Whomsoever I will ask, they'll say no. See? Anybody, I need a person who has got a Facebook profile. Anyone here? Okay, volunteer. I need a volunteer. I'm not going to pick. Who is the one who will come? I need a person for two minutes. You got a Facebook profile? Come. Thank you. What's your name? Pavitra. Okay, now Pavitra has got a Facebook profile. She has put everything. This is how you put Facebook. Your name, your photos, interests, events attended. Right? Now Pavitra, do you like some singers? What do you like? You like some actors? Great. Who's your favorite actor? Shiva Karthik. I did not understand the name. Shiva Karthik. Oh, Shiva Karthik. Shiva Karthik is Pavitra's favorite actor. Now, Shiva Karthik came to a program here last week. Alright? For sure, Pavitra will also go. You will go. She has gone to the event and when she goes to the event, obviously she would want to tell all the friends that she are here. So she will take a selfie, right? <laughs> selfie and a check-in. Check-in will also happen. I'll check into the event so I am feeling happy at Shiva Karthik's event. Correct? Now all these things are there on Facebook. Now I am the same guy who troubles all the girls. We're traveling. 
Aishwarya Devi. Now, Pavitra is coming to college again. And I walk up to her saying, Hi Pavitra. Hi. Hello. The response is hello. And then I say, Hey, you were at Shiva Kartik's event last week. Yes. Now I say, but you might still have a question saying, but how do you know, right? And then I say, you know what, the selfie that you clicked, I was also standing in the background. Thank you, Guru. You can say it. Now, do you see the difference here? Aishwarya might have said a direct no to me, get out, I don't want to talk to you. But Poitra will talk to me because I am talking some information that she it is correct about her. I know her name. I know what she attended. Now tell me, is this a risk? Is this a danger? Yes, it is. It is a danger that any random guy from the world goes on Facebook can know about you. So this is a risk. Now how to avoid this risk? Very simple. Whenever you create a profile or whenever you post something on Facebook, you have got the option who will see this post or who will see your information. And what are the options that we have? Everyone, friends only, friends of friends, only me. So girls, my suggestion is friends only. So that no stranger can look at your profile and your information. Okay? You will look at their screen and make a type of message. And that happens. You must have seen people, your friends, while they talk to you, they are messaging someone. And they are like, yeah, right, okay, yeah. They keep doing that, multitasking. That's the habit. It's not a bad habit, but it is addiction. Now I was talking about community standards, social behavior, correct? About the teachers, when you wish your teacher when they enter into the classroom. So, on every platform also, there is a community standard securing our account. You guys, all girls have a Gmail account. You have a Gmail account. Those who are using Facebook has got a Facebook account and password. Somebody is using Instagram, Instagram account and password. Somebody is using some other thing, for example, Flipkart, Amazon, you have got all those. Passwords, right? Now, what happens? How do you make a password? In India, there is a very common behavior of making passwords. My first name, last name, we have a problem. Or, boyfriend's name, or brother's name, father's name, mother's name. If married, then son, daughter's name, wife's name, something like this. But there is a name and a number. Correct? Now, your information is already on the internet. I can know your first name, I can know your last name, I can know your best friend's name, your father's name, everything. I can know, I can get to know from Facebook, Instagram. Do you know what is hacking? Hackers? Have you heard hackers? Yes or no? Yes or no? Have you heard hackers? What do hackers do? Hackers? Hack into your accounts. Now let me tell you, I also know a little bit of hacking. I do it. What happens? So there is something called dictionary attack. In hacking, there is something called dictionary attack. In which I as a hacker can take your first name, last name, year of birth, hometown, your father's name, mother's name and put all of those things in that dictionary attack software and I run the software. I will get 10,000 combinations in one minute. So of the 10,000 combinations, one will definitely be your password. Even if you have used capital, small, whatever. Right? 
So creating a password with a name, right? The hacker can open all your 10 accounts with a single password. So create different passwords. You can create different passwords for all. Now you must be thinking that boss, we are not so genius to remember 10, 20 passwords. I am also not a genius. I have 63 passwords. Now how do I remember 63 different passwords? I don't write it down. Neither I save it on my desktop. Nor do I save it on my phone. A bank locker. We put in our value bits. Gold, diamond, all jewelries. Right? To keep it safe. Similarly, LastPass application, LAST, PASS, it's a locker for passwords. You can create like all passwords different and you can save it inside the last pass. Nobody else will be open, able to open it. Now you need to remember only one username and password which is your last pass username and password and everything is inside. So create different passwords so that if one password is hacked, only one is hacked. Not the 10 accounts. Okay? Then Login alerts. Facebook users, have you seen this message anytime that your Facebook has been logged in from a new device? When you change your phone or when you log in to your friend's laptop or desktop, have you received this message that your Facebook has been logged in from an unusual device? Please review. If not, Please go, when you go back home, check in your Facebook, go to privacy settings. In privacy settings, there is something called login alert. Turn on. Turn on the login alert. Then, all of you know what is password now? Do you know what is OTP? OTP. You know? Now I just now took an example of Pavitra. Uh, Pavitra. We took an example of Pavitra, how the information that she put on Facebook was used to get her information. Correct? Nowadays, teenagers, school going, college going, students have a very great habit. I will not say bad or good, but have a great habit of putting everything on Facebook or Instagram. They come to college, one selfie of the college. They go to some restaurant, another selfie, or again on Instagram or on Facebook. They are doing nothing, feeling alone, again feeling bored. One more selfie, right? Everybody is seeing that. Is it necessary to put such information there? Yes or no? Girls, hello, hello, hello. I hear some noise. Okay. Kidnapping. You know kidnapping? Kidnapping is a crime. Somebody picks up a child and runs away. Or somebody... Now kidnapping happens for everyone. Even older guys get kidnapped. Earlier, how kidnapping used to happen? One person or two persons will follow that person for like 16, 17, 20 days and then see the entire behavior and routine. Correct? And then they will get them. Why did they follow? To get the information about the person. Right? Now, is it required to follow? No. Everything is there on the internet. For example, if somebody wants to kidnap a kid, all they need to do is to look into their father's or mother's profile. What does the mother do? First day at school, please bless my child. One photo on the internet. Now the criminal knows where the child is going, which school. The child goes to play, the mother will again put another photo. See how my child is playing, 
how active he is second photo the child goes to karate class there will be another photo with full karate dress he is bless my child he is going to get strong all these things happen so now there is no requirement for a criminal to follow the child all he needs to do is to sit on internet look at the profile of the mother and father and get information and see which is the best time to pick up the child correct so this is also a risk and we need to control that risk how first of all do not put all the information on internet that is one for girls how many of you have put your date of birth original there original date of birth a lot because people will wish you 5 600 wishes will come on your birthday right with all cakes cake photos but it is dangerous because if i know your last name and your date of birth i can get your pan card information if you have a pan card which is dangerous you should not do that that is first second put all the information no problem but at least control that same friends only so that not everybody is able to see that information right okay finish your talking then we'll talk again okay all right
Instagram. Forget it. WhatsApp. We have lots of WhatsApp users here. You guys use smartphones also? Because without a smartphone you can't use WhatsApp. Right? We don't use... How many of you are not on Facebook? How many of you are not on Facebook? Now see there are a lot of times. And if I come to any one of you and ask you the reason, the common reasons that I get is I am scared of using it. I fear that something wrong will happen. Or my parents have asked me not to do so. These are the common reasons. And the common reason is nothing but the fear of something wrong. It is the same condition that was there for electricity 100 years back. Now we can't imagine our lives without electricity. There is a time which is coming when we cannot imagine our lives without usage of technology. Correct? So we need to understand how we use it, how we safely use it. Okay? Digital, everybody knows nowadays there are smart watches, smartphones, lots of things, Alexa. Have you seen Alexa? The advertisement? It's a small device, it takes voice commands. If I have Alexa at home, I can just say Alexa, play a song and Alexa starts playing songs. Right? So this is how technology is emerging. Now, we need to use that. Do you see this? Anybody knows what is this? This one. Do you know what is this? Anybody knows? Okay, nobody knows. Have you seen movies? Tamil, Hindi, English movies? Not English, Indian movies. Have you seen, you know, when a patient is dying, the doctor put on something like an electric iron dish and the patient gets up. That is called defibrillator. Defibrillator. This is the new form of defibrillator. Okay? This is the same machine, but now this is a smart machine. What happens is a small bandage like a patch is put on the chest of the patient. And that patch is connected via internet to the smartphone of the doctor. The moment the heart rate of the patient goes down, the doctor receives a signal, an alarm on his phone, and wherever he is sitting, for example, the patient is on first floor and the doctor is on fifth floor, from fifth floor of the hospital, he can press a button on his phone and the patient will start getting electric shock on his own. Same, a life can be saved, right? This is how technology is emerging. I just gave you one example. And there are a lot of things where we are using smart things technologically. Okay? Now I was given to understand that all of them are PG and MQ students here. Right? Now, talking to PG and MQ students and saying I will make you literate, is it not idiotic? All of you are literate. You are doing post graduations, masters, but digitally different means three things. You need to know what is technology, what are the benefits of it. You need to know what are the safety measures and tools to use it. And third, you need to know responsible online behavior. Responsible online behavior. When a teacher or a professor enters your class, what is the first thing that we do? Wish them good afternoon, good morning, as per the time in our clock. We never say, hi man, what's up? Do we do that? We don't. Because we are being taught not to do so. That's called behavior, responsible behavior. Similarly, when we are online, on any platform, be it Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, 
we need to behave in a certain manner in a certain community. That is called responsible online behavior. So these are the three things that will comprise of digital literacy. When we practice all these things and when we know these things, it is digitally literate. Okay? Now just a question. What do you think is the population percentage which is using internet today in India? What percentage of Indian population is using internet? Don't give me answers, keep a number in your mind. And let's see if the number matches. Only 34%. And with this 34%, we are number two in the world. Second largest internet using population. Alright? Out of all the population which is using internet, do you know that women population is only 30%, the rest 70% is male. That is one reason why we are doing these programs to make you aware so that you can feel safe and start using it. Lots of women don't use because they do not feel safe. And if I go online, something wrong will happen to me. Somebody will steal my picture, somebody will make a video, something will happen and I will have trouble. That will not be the case, at least for a lot of things. I will take you directly through because this is here. Now I will go directly to what all are the risks that are there online and how it should be safe. Okay? Now, I need someone for two minutes, but I need a person who has got a Facebook profile. Who has got a Facebook profile here? Please come. Oh, she never expected I'll call him. <laughs> okay, please come for two minutes. It's okay, it's okay. Come. I need someone with a Facebook profile for two minutes. Come, come. We'll talk only. Come. Okay, come. Okay, great. Thank you for coming. What's your name? Kartika. 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 Now, Kartika, come here. Kartika is a native of Shimla, see? She comes to this college. Alright. Now one fine day Kartika is coming to college from her home. And just imagine that I am a guy of your age. Okay? Now I walk up to Kartika on the road and I say, Hello, will you come for a cup of coffee with me? See, the response is a blank no. Okay? Now, Kartika is on Facebook. Kartika, do you like some singers? Any singer do you like? Your favorite singer? You and Shankar Raja. I am sorry I have very less knowledge of South Indian music. You and Shankar Raja is Kartika's favorite musician. Is he alive? He, he, he is here. In Tamil Nadu somewhere. Great. So UN Shankar Raja comes to Shivakasu for a concert. Obviously since Kartika is favorite. So she will go there to attend that program. And since she has got a Facebook profile, she will do a check-in also and a selfie feeling happy at UN Kartika UN Shankar Raja's concert. Happens? It happens normally. Okay, let's assume you do that. Now, you are walking from home to college again. Alright, and I walk up to you and I say, Hi Kartika. Hi. Hello. Now I say, Hey Kartika, you were there at the concert last week. Yeah. Yes. And she is wondering, how does he know? 
and she may ask also that how do you know? I say you know what? You click the picture, the selfie, and I was in the background. Thank you, Karthik. Now you can go. Okay. So now do you see the difference in two situations? The first situation, I want to talk to this girl, and the girl said, "Right now, get up." But in the second situation, I am able to strike a conversation, to start a dialogue with the girl, only because Kartika has put all his information on Facebook, and it was public. So anyone who is there on Facebook can look at the information and use the information to their benefit. Is this a risk? Is this a risk? Yes or no? Girls, am I talking French? Are you able to understand? Yes. No. Yes. So this is a risk. How to be safe? Not that we will not use Facebook. We will. But when you make a profile or when you put any post, you get options. And the options are, who can see your post? Everyone, friends only, friends of friends, only me. Right? My suggestion always is your wish, your choice. But I always suggest girls to keep it only to friends only. So that whatever you post, your friends can see and comment, not everybody else on the Facebook platform or Instagram platform. Okay? This is why I opened this page and this is exactly how a Facebook profile looks like. You put everything, your name, your interest, hometown, current city, education, interest, everything, events attended, all those you put there. Keep it friends only so that not everybody can look at all this information. Because these are your private information. Right? Now I will skip this. Ah, only one important part here is if, how many of you have uh, debit cards? ATM cards, ATM cards. I'm not going to ask you to give me money. How many you have ATM cards? A really the full head one. Yes. I am definitely not asking money. Saying go withdraw 100 rupees, come back. Not at all. Why I am asking is, is there any one of you who has saved the ATM pin in contact list? I see a lot of people doing that. SBI pin 9371 is one of the contact. Please, please don't do that ever. I will tell you why. Have you ever downloaded a game or any application on your smartphone? Yes, of course. When you download, the first thing that you see is this application wants access to your contacts. Allow or deny. And if you say deny, the application is not installed. And the moment you allow, the developer of that particular application is able to see your entire contact list. So your ATM pin is also visible to that person sitting in some corner of the world. Never save your ATM pin on the phone as a contact or never save any one of your passwords also. I will come to the password part. Now let's talk about passwords. Average girl sitting here will have minimum 3 to 4 accounts, minimum. Let me tell you, first one is your email account, which is normally Gmail. Right? So you have one account, one password. Then there are Facebook users, they will have another password. Instagram, Twitter, Flipkart, Amazon, Banking, all passwords. How do we create passwords? In India, there is a very typical habit of creating password, which is my name, first name, last name, year of birth, done. For example, my name is Purnendu Singh, maybe I am smart enough, I said Singh Purnendu 1978. My name is Purnendu Singh, I was born in 1978. Very much available on Facebook. Or my wife's name, or my kid's name, brother's name, sister's name, 
boyfriend, girlfriend, all these names are there. We create passwords with names. Hacking, you have heard there is something called hacking, hackers, bad guys. There is something called dictionary attack in hacking. In dictionary attack, what happens is they put all these information in the fields there. First name, last name, date of birth, year of birth, hometown, mother's name, father's name, all. Even to the extent best friend's name. And then they initiate or they start the dictionary attack. You know what the dictionary attack does? It gives me 10,000 combination of passwords with all these things in one minute. If I create 10,000 passwords with all these combinations, there is 80 to 90 percent chance that one of them is your password, correct password. That easy. Very easy. Because if not that, then I will again put some more fields in one more, one more minute. I will get 20,000. Easy to hack. So first thing is, create uncommon password which is not hackable. Which is not easy to hack. Question is how? How do we create such passwords? So, I don't know, there are a lot of ways to do it. But I use a very different, I use one way for myself. Now just pay attention. Okay. It can be discussed later. Hello, girls in the back. Discuss it later, no problem. We'll talk. Okay? Now, what do we do? I create a sentence for myself. Okay? I create a sentence for myself. For example, the last password that I was using, the sentence was, I love to go to work at 10. Alright? The sentence is, I love to go to work at 10. And now I make all the first letters. So what is my password? I L T G T W at the rate sign 1 zero. It doesn't have my first name, my last name, my year of birth, my son's name, nothing. Now can a dictionary attack take my password? No. Because the hacker will never realize what kind of sentence I have framed. Because hackers normally take the first name, last name, year of birth and all, right? So it's difficult to hack such a password. You can also do so or you can create some more fantastic ideas to create new passwords. But suggestion is never use names, birthdays and all these things for password. Second problem with passwords is the password is not a password, it is prasad. You know what is prasad? That you get from God in the temple. It is prasad. Prasadam. Right? In South India we say prasadam. You know why I am saying this? Because we create one password and we distribute among all accounts. Same password, Gmail has got, same password, Facebook has got, same password. This is a very big risk. In case one of your password is hacked, all 5, 6, 7 accounts that you have is compromised. Correct? Never. Create different sentences and create different passwords. Now, you will again think of a logical problem saying, how do we remember so many passwords? Let me tell you, I have 63 passwords. 63. I am also not a genius, I don't remember all. I use an application to save my passwords. The application's name is LastPass. L-A-S-T-P-A-S-S. It is nothing but a locker. You know locker? Bank locker? Or gold diamond inside. Locker. Last pass is the same locker for me. I create a password, 
I go save it there. I create another one, I go save it there. What does it do for me? When I have to put in some password, I just open my last pass and put the password from there, copy paste. And all those are in dots turned on. I don't even see what password was there. So now I need to remember how many username and password? Only one. Which is my last pass username and password. The rest, all my passwords are inside that browser. This application can be downloaded even on laptops as well as on smartphones. Okay? So password risk is taken care of. Then, Facebook, somebody who is using it, has anyone seen a message which comes from Facebook that says your Facebook account was locked in from unusual device kindly review if not seen you will see in case you are logging in from your friend's laptop or on a new mobile phone that means facebook is trying to tell you hello somebody is trying to log in into your account it is not the normal device that you always use but that message you will only get when you go and Enable that option in the privacy settings. Login alerts enabled. When you enable that, anybody who is trying to log into your Facebook account, you will get a message. And if you say, it's not me, there are two options that will come. It's me, it's not me. The moment you click it's not me, the person will be logged out. Okay? Safety. Hey, this is a safety measure. Two-factor authentication. That is another option almost everywhere. It's on Gmail, it's on Facebook, it's on Instagram. To the level, it's on WhatsApp. Two-factor authentication. Now, do you know what is two-factor? What is authentication? Do you know? Anybody knows here what is authentication? Proving yourself. When you enter the college, the guard at the gate, security guard, lets you enter the college. Why? Because you are wearing the ID cards. That is your first factor of authentication, right? If you are not wearing the ID card, the guard may stop you, saying hello. I don't know if you are from this college, but if it is in your bag, you take it out and show it to them. You will say, okay, get in. So that is first time that you prove you are from this college. Second time, when you enter a particular class, the teacher comes and takes attendance. That is the second time that you prove you are the one who is supposed to be sitting in this, that class. That is called authentication and you have authenticated twice. You know what is OTP? One time password? When you enable two-factor authentication on any platform, any platform, for example, your Gmail. Go to the settings. Under settings, there is something called privacy settings or security settings. Under that, you will see two-factor authentication. The moment you will say turn on two-factor authentication, it will ask you a mobile number. If you put in your mobile number there and save it, next time you will try to log in to Gmail, it will send the OTP to your phone. And if you don't put that OTP, you will not be able to log in. Now, if you put that and somebody gets your username and password, they will still not be able to log into your account because you are getting OTP in your phone, not in their phone. Right? This will even further help you secure your account. So my suggestion is kindly turn on the two-factor authentications on your all platform, Gmail, Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, everything. Alright? Then controlling information. Controlling information is one more thing that you should be doing. Nowadays, with the young generation, what happens is, the younger generation tend to put everything on Facebook or everything on Instagram. Early morning they get up, Good morning, sunshine, Malayan, 7 p.m. photo and update. 
they are going to school or they are having breakfast. Either it will be a very happy post saying, wow, what a breakfast. Or it will be a very salty post saying, my mom doesn't know anything else to cook other than eating. Right? Then they go to college or school and then they post something else there. After that they go for, you know, my dominoes, pizza hut, dominoes or any other restaurant with friends one more selfie, feeling yo at this restaurant with three others. After that they go home and they start feeling alone, it will be again one more selfie. Life is boring. And one more selfie. So, lot of information. Unnecessary also. Right? We need to control the information that we are giving to the world. Because, knowingly or unknowingly, we are telling the world about, about ourselves. Right? With my Facebook, I can decide nowadays which of my friends I should talk religion with, which are the friends I should talk movies with, which are the friends I should talk girls with. Because they have given all this information themselves. Somebody keeps posting a religious post. Next time I meet in my Instagram start in so, do you know this is the I visited Madhavai in Ashik Temple. Hari, he is very much interested in talking to me. Somebody who talks about movies, I go and tell you, you know, there are no this movie is bad. Immediately he starts discussing it with me because I know the interest area. Right? Same thing can happen with you. Right? Somebody is looking at your entire Facebook profile. They come to you posing as a very religious man if you are a religious girl. And become a friend. Easy. We need to control that information. What should we post? In that case, then you will think that we should not post anything. No, you should. First of all, like I said, friends only, that only your friends are able to see your information. Second, if you can say the same thing on a chawraha, on a like crossroad, post that on Facebook or Instagram. If you cannot, don't. That's my, that's my rule. For example, I am doing a session here. Tomorrow I will post a picture of all of you and myself saying delivering the session at and check calling. This I can go even on the crossword and you know, say it loud. Six, seven people who will hear, they will also say, okay. But they will not say he is a bad man. But if I go on that crossword and start showing, you know what, my wife slapped me twice in the morning. Crazy man. Same thing cannot be posted on Facebook. Right? This is private. Use, use some kind of logic. I am just giving you what I do. But use some logic. Then reacting in time. Indian women. Epitome of patience. Do you agree? Women in India are definitely known as Shakti, but at the same time they are known to be the most patient creature on the globe. Everything keeps happening with them. Abusive, you know, friend, girlfriend, boyfriend, anything, they still smile. They, every time they will have a smile on their face, they will not talk to anyone. They will not react. Why? Because we have been told so. Girls and ladies, please start reacting online. You can be patient in your personal life, but I don't want anyone of you to be patient online. If some person is troubling you, creating some nonsense for you, block that guy. First option, remove him from your friend list. Block, report. How do you report? On the platform itself, there is an option that tells you report. For example, somebody posts a dirty post on Facebook. When you go to that post, you see three dotted three dots on the top of the post or three lines. You click on that three lines, 
it opens a list of options and that will say report. When you click on report, it will ask you why. You can say it is an inappropriate post or it is a dirty post, it is an abusive post and submit. Facebook itself will remove that post. Okay? Unfollow. Unfollowing is something that like you and I are friends. Now she says, oh my god, he is good to me. It's okay. For example, this girl sitting here and I are friends. I keep posting some nonsense. She likes me a lot as a friend. She doesn't want to unfriend me, but she doesn't want to look at those all those nonsense that I am posting. She can just unfollow me on Facebook. I will still be her friend on Facebook, but she is not seeing all the nonsense that I am posting. So you can unfollow. Because in India, you know what, we are so emotional. Unfollowing hurts us the most. Oh, he is coming back. I know what. Is it not right? Before unfollowing, unfriending, oh, we, we have a pain in our heart. How do we feel? How will she be? It's okay. Let it be. Unfollow, unfriend, block, report. Alright? We need to do these things so that your life is easy. No need to make it complicated. Last but not the least, it is always happening, it's a bitter truth. Anything happens with us, we don't talk to our parents. Because 90% of the time, if we tell our mom, a flying chappal is waiting for us. Even if it is not our fault. First thing that will happen is a flying chappal. And with a precise aim. It happens. But let me tell you, even after flying chappal, the parents will help you. So talk to your parents if you are going through some issues online also. Somebody is harassing you, somebody is blackmailing you, talk. Why am I telling you this? Because I have seen lots of cases, we run helplines also. I have seen lots of cases where girls finally committed suicide. Because they were not able to talk to anyone, there was no one to talk to, they were scared of the parents. No need. Please talk. Okay? Now quickly I will these are all the screenshots of what I told you. Two factor authentication and all, controlling your audience. Videos are not playing because of identity issues of Microsoft. This, what you are seeing is a video. And the video, I will explain you what is in that video. A boy and a girl are sitting in a coffee shop. Friends, classmates. The boy has a laptop open. And he said, he asked the girl, saying, can you give me the phone for one minute? I need to make a call. Because my balance is run out. What will happen? If it happens with you, one, any one of you, you will give the phone. Obvious. Because it's a friend. Now, do you know WhatsApp can be logging on to laptops also? WhatsApp web logging? This boy takes the phone and logs it to the WhatsApp of the girl on his laptop. And then he pretends to make a call and gives the phone back. Now this boy is able to see all the chats that the girl had with her friends and he starts blackmailing her. Risk? Danger hand? Yes. So again my suggestion to avoid this risk is kindly do not share your phones with anyone. Let it be your best of best friend. That is first. In case if you still want to be, you know that why open-hearted person to help the entire world, lock your applications first. There are app locking softwares available which can lock your WhatsApp, Facebook, Gallery. Just leave that phone wala option open. Because we give phone only to, for someone to call, make a call. 
लॉक रेस्ट ऑफ दिन और राइट ओके लास्ट बेच ऑडियंस ओके वो स्लीपी ओके सर ओके आई विल एक्चुअली कम देर एंड सेंड इट यू एंड देन स्टार्ट टॉकिंग सी दिस इज हाउ वी एनेबल द टू फैक्टर ऑथेंटिकेशन इन व्हाट्सएप एंड येस्टरडे आई वाज शोइंग यू टू वन ऑफ द प्रोफेसर्स इन कलसनिंगम यूनिवर्सिटी आई एनेबल्ड माय एंड नाउ आई फॉरगॉट द पासवर्ड डन आई नॉट टेकिंग दिस ऑल राइट नेक्स्ट रिस्पॉन्सिबल ऑनलाइन बिहेवियर आई जस्ट वॉन्टेड टू सी यू आर एबल टू रीड इट फ्रॉम सो यू आर आई यू एबल टू रीड इट आर यू एबल टू रीड और राइट सो वेन वी स्पोक स्पीक अबाउट रेस्पॉन्सिबल ऑनलाइन बिहेवियर वी स्पीक ऑफ दीज फाइव थिंग्स फर्स्ट इज रीजन थिंकिंग सेकेंड इज एक्टिंग थर्ड इज रेसिलियंस फोर्थ इज रेस्पेक्ट है responsibility and law reason thinking is like giving a reason to everything that we think empathy is nothing but putting yourself in somebody else's condition and thinking how he or she is feeling resilience is standing up against the odd fighting back that's what resilience respect we all know responsibility and law we all know okay now let's talk about reason thinking a little bit because this is very important it says celebrity ignores a hopeless man and there is a photo where in this lady who is a celebrity is walking by and a poor man is asking something If you see such a picture here of your some celebrity that we know in India, how will we feel? We will feel you know very bad about that celebrity saying what a high-headed girl or boy, right? How arrogant! Is it not the same thought that will come to our mind? It will. Let's see another example. This is in Hindi. I don't know how many of you know how to read Hindi, but I will tell you. This is a high court order. See, it's written in English, high court order. And the message is, it says that schools cannot charge the fees from the parents for the month of June and July because these two are vacation months. Do you know uh, something called viral going viral? When a message goes viral. means it has spread across the area all right this message this court wala message went viral in delhi last year 2017 parents from lot of schools they went to the school saying give me my money back because high court has sent us this message okay now the principal asked which high court there are lots of high court in india it's not written here which high court Okay, now let's look at something else. Oh no, not a bad celebrity, no. She never ignored this homeless man. Somebody has put this picture to give a bad name to that celebrity. Next is, it's very people can't you can't read it from here, but I'll read out what it is written here on the top. High Court of Sindh at Karachi. Do you know where is Karachi? Yes, Karachi. Thank you. Karachi is in our neighboring country called Pakistan. So it is a real high court order, but this high court is not in our country. So we need to verify information before we act on those informations. All right. That's called fake news peddling. Nowadays, why I said this is very important. Nowadays, WhatsApp has become a news channel rather than a messaging platform. 
Every day, morning, evening, afternoon, we keep receiving some news. How many of you are watch a group in families? Mom, dad, brother, sister, wala group. How many of you are on family WhatsApp groups? I am there. I will tell you why. In family WhatsApp groups, at least there are every family has got six, seven doctors. So called doctors. You just put saying I have headache on that group. And then you just see them fun. You will get eight to ten remedies. Somebody will tell you, you know, stand on your head. Somebody will tell you, eat this, eat that, eat that. Headache will not go, your stomach will definitely be upset. I have got blood pressure problem. Okay? Now my mother and my bua, my father's sister, they have told me at least like 101 remedies of blood pressure other than the medicine that I have given. Eat sesame seeds, eat black pepper, eat coriander, eat this, eat that. And then one day my wife made a mistake of putting saying my hair is thinning. And now, so they said put oil, put air, I said put some chopped onion also, I will have omelette. Right? Why am I telling you these are not jokes? This is how false information is being propagated, being sent across. Let me tell you a real and a bad story now. May 2018, this year May, a news on WhatsApp started going viral in the outskirts of a city called Bangalore. You know Karnataka's capital, Bangalore? In the outskirts of Bangalore, a news started making rounds. It went viral, say three boys in a car without a number plate are kidnapping kids. Okay? If you receive such message for same class, what will you do? Immediately send the same to all the friends who you know on WhatsApp. Immediately forward. Everybody did the same. They immediately forwarded to anyone they knew on WhatsApp. So this news spread across four or five villages. Unfortunately, one village, the tender guy was standing and they saw a car coming which had three boys, no number three. What would have happened? They caught the boys, started beating them. They beat them so much that one of them died. Okay? Now do you know who died? The guy who died was an engineer with a company called Google. Google has got office in Hyderabad. That boy has brought a new car. He went to meet his cousin who lived in Bangalore. Two of his friends accompanied him. Unfortunate, bad. This is what WhatsApp can do with fake news. So, we need to be very careful. Now, there is a law against it also. After this incident, Madras High Court, you know, Madras High Court has given a ruling saying, in case if you are caught in forwarding an event, a message, that can lead to loss of life or communal tension. You are liable to be prosecuted up to seven years. So, because we receive a lot of messages where people say, forwarded as received. That means, I don't know if it is true or not, but I am forwarding it. Those people also can be prosecuted. There can be a case against them. Okay? Now, one more very interesting factor. I am sure I know people who don't want to raise hands.
How many of you girls have rejected friend request from boys? Have you ever rejected a friend request on Facebook from a boy? Nobody has ever sent you a friend request. You liars. How? I'm, okay, I am not asking you. You guys are not responsive. You don't respond. I am sure there are a few girls here who has rejected the friend's request from the same boy three, four times. And that same this boy is sending, keep, keep sending request. Let me tell you, if a boy or any person, forget a boy, guy or girl, if any person is sending you a friend request more than three times, after you rejecting it, you can file a police complaint. And the person can go to jail for five years, up to five years. Okay? This is a fact. There is a section for it. Alright? Next. So fake news, we have spoken about it. Now let's see how we identify fake news. Whenever you get a fake news, there are a few things that you need to check. First you check the URLs very closely. URLs very closely means you check the web address. It will say timesnow.com, znews.com. But in znews, it will be ZE, not ZE. They very smartly put spelling mistakes so that you can't catch it. Okay? Second is investigating the source. Try to see the source. For example, go back. Open this page, please. Back. Yeah, see this news here. It says Uttar Pradesh, cleric rapes 14 year old girl inside the hospital crisis. Okay? This news. But look at the source of this news. GLS. Anyone knows any news agency called GLS? This is false. This is the false news. Fake news. Janvi Kapoor tried for 70 hours. Medically impossible. If a person cries for 70 years, they die. Dehydration. Not possible. All these are false news. But these, why do people spread false news? Either for monetary benefit, political benefit, or some of them are sadists who just want the world to be a bad place. Correct? Now the elections are coming, you will see a lot of fake news making rounds. Lots. Another another six months, I am telling you big time. I am ready. Myself, mentally. Let the fake news come to me, I will see. What I do is, check other sources. Check other information sources. For example, you get a news, for example, bomb explosion has happened in this room. You get it on WhatsApp. Just simply open the news channels. ZTV, znews.com, or astak.com, or ndtv.com and see if there is a news which says Poplast has happened or not. Very simple. Second thing that I practice is, I cannot control who will send me message. Right? My number is with lots of people. Family, you know, friends, you know, friends are my numbers. Friends across India and internationally have my numbers. Because I have stayed in Europe also for 3-4 years. So I cannot stop anyone from sending me a message. But I can stop myself from spreading that message across. So let any news come to my WhatsApp. I read it and I close my phone and put it in my pocket. I don't follow it. Unless I am 100% sure that this is the right one. Otherwise by this time I would have been charged with murder of 6-7 people because of sending the wrong treatments that I received. Put a boy, put an egg and all those in your head, hair will be thick and this and that. I don't want to do any of these. Okay? Then, are ethics really important? Yes, they are very much important. Now, 
I am so sorry, videos are not being here, but I will. This is again a video, and this is a video of a very important topic called sex torsion. We all know extortion. Extortion is nothing but taking money. Dara dhamka ke, right? Some big heavy weight guy sent calls up someone saying, "Hello, who sent you a line of money?" Or he sent you something bad. And the person out of fear sends the money. That's called extortion. Now it has given rise to a term called sextortion. Sextortion is nothing but the same exploitation in favor of sexual behaviors. And it is commonly happening across India. Commonly, what happens is a boy and a girl become friends. Then they become boyfriend girlfriend. Then they start sharing jokes. Then they start sharing photos, videos. Suddenly something happens, and the relationship is broken. Now the boy starts threatening and blackmailing the girl. Give me money, or come back to me, or else I will post that photo, video online, or I will leak these videos. Commonly happening. Accept it or not, I receive at least. A lot of complaints on a weekly basis for sex torsions from girls across India. Now, what should we do? First thing is our priority as a girl. For example, if I am a girl and somebody has put my post in a video online, so my first priority is to get that video deleted. Correct? I would want the video to be deleted immediately. Make note. Take out your notebooks if it is possible. Make a note. I will tell you how to get those videos deleted. Kindly make note, girls. It's very important. Take out your notebook. Write down four or five steps that I am telling you because this can either help you or you can help someone to get the videos deleted or photos deleted. Posted online, it has got an address. Copy that address. Copy that web address. Step number one: copy that web address. Okay. Contact us. That means it will help you contact with the administrator on the website, the person who is running that website. When you click on that option, it gives you a mail address. So the step number two is click on contact us on that website. Click on contact us and get the mail address. Okay. Click on contact us and get the mail address. Step number three. Now you need to write the mail to that mail address that you got, and every mail will have a subject. The subject line should say, write down what is the subject line that you need to write. Subject will say notice under D M C A. Notice under D M C A. D for David, M for Michael, C for Charlie, A for Anna. Notice under D M C A for content removal. Content removal. Uploaded without my permission. Okay. Once you write this, you need to do one more thing, and that is to attach a soft copy of. Your government approved identity card, such as Aadhaar card. You need to attach a copy of your Aadhaar card or any other government ID, and then just send a mail. Once you do this, the video or the photo has to be deleted within 36 hours. Be it in any country, not only in India, US, Canada, Australia, anywhere the website is hosted, it will be deleted. Okay, cool.
Now let's go quickly to money. Money, money. Yes, thank you. All right. How many of you think you know how to withdraw money from an ATM? And as usual, I will not see any hands. Right? How many of you have ATM cards here? I saw some hands earlier, no? Debit cards? I will take you through very important things with office only. Not in detail because you know, you guys are not going to do some stopping on Facebook. <laughs> but I will take you through some important things that will be required for your information also such as passwords or banking frauds. Alright? So this uh, program aims to deliver online safety tips to around 60,000 women in India in the first place. And Tamil Nadu is one of the states for them. Okay, now so this was the introduction. Now, quickly going through the password thing. At least all of you ladies sitting here has got three to four passwords. One more definitely will be your Gmail account or any other email account that you have. Then few other passwords like if you have a Flipkart account, if you have a Facebook account or if you have a bank account online. You have got three four passwords. Similarly, there are mistakes that we always make by creating passwords. And the mistakes are, first thing, in India, normal behavior of selecting a password or creating a password is own first name, last name, year of birth, son's name, daughter's name, husband's name, wife's name, or sometimes best friend's name, brother's name. All these are the combinations that we use. For example, my name is Kudlin Hussain and I was born in 1978. So my password name is Sri Kudlin Hu 1978. Something of that sort of Kudlin Hu 1978, Kudlin Hu at the rate 1978, Kudlin Hu underscore 1978. Something of that sort. Second mistake that we make always is that we always treat the password as one fit, one size fits all. One password, six accounts, five accounts. Easy to remember. That's always the case. Why we say the same time tell you in hacking there is something called dictionary attack. In that dictionary attack, we will put in your First name, last name, hometown, father's name, brother's name, mother's name, daughter's name, son's name, all, year of birth, everything. And I initiate that dictionary attack. I will get 10,000 combinations of your password in my name. Pretty easy to hack your password. So this is the risk. Now how do I love to go to work at 10. And then I pick up all the first letters of the sentence. So what is my password? I L T G T W at the rate sign and one zero. Now, if you look at it, 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 it fulfills all the criteria of password creation. It has got numbers, it has got letters, it has got a special symbol and it never contains my name, first name, last name, hometown, anything. So now it is difficult for a hacker to guess this and to get my password. That is one. Second, I have created different passwords for all different accounts and believe me, I have got 63 accounts. So I have 63 different passwords. I am definitely not a genius student that I remember all these 63 passwords. I use an application called LastPass. L-A-S-T-E-A-S-S LastPass is the application that is a locker locker for my passwords It can be installed in a phone It can be installed in a computer also So once downloaded 
you create a username and password for LastPass, and that is the only username and password that you need to remember. The rest all username and passwords you can put it in LastPass and lock it. And it's very safe. It's pretty safe. It has not been hacked till now. People save the PIN number in mobile phone. Say SDI PIN or SDTI. It is very dangerous. I tell you how. Anyone plays Candy Crush? Any call? Hello, ma'am. I also play.